Hey, what's up? We'll be Ron here and in this lesson we're going to talk about digital simplification. My goal here is to show you how to use digital tools. In this example it's going to be Photoshop but there are plenty of other software to do these things in order to both allow us to see the reference more clearly, figure out its essence, understand it better and also stylize and change things to make it more interesting. So I'm going to show you how it's done. Let's get to it. So I'm on Photoshop and I got a couple of uh, photos pulled up here. Uh, this one you may recognize from the Washtober 2020 challenge. I actually painted uh, this one. Uh, this is the city of Tianjin, I believe in China. Um, and uh, when you look at this thing, you may very well be distracted by all of the details, all of the buildings, uh, all of these small highlights here are very tiny, but they are important and they are noticeable. Um, so one of the first things, first tools I go to is just desaturation, turning the photo black and white. Uh, and uh, the way I do it in Photoshop is I hold the shift command in U, but you can also go to image adjustments, um, desaturate, or you can go with hue saturation, lower the saturation all the way. Here's the desaturate option like this, or you can just go again, image adjustment, uh, hue saturation and move this all the way to the left. Okay. Now the way does not matter because you can probably do this on an iPad, iPhone, any smartphone, pretty much. What I want you to see is really how much more information this actually gives us. Because when you look at the original, it's a bit hard to tell. For example, you look at the sky, they look incredibly light compared to all of the city down below. And all of these small highlights are very distracting. Once you go black and white, the sky is not necessarily as light as you'd think, but what is light is this light source here. You can really see the sun shining through the clouds, not to mention you have the clouds, which are also important. So you get to understand why this shines so brightly. It's not necessarily because of the sky, but rather everything is pretty dark except for this very strong light source. Okay, once again, and look at the road down below here, the main prominent one. So you go desaturate. It's not necessarily as light as you'd think. I would have maybe thought of making it as light as the, the sun itself, but it's not. Okay, so this is just another layer, another tool to, uh, this is like my go-to for almost anything. It just allows you to see the values more accurately. Even if you plan on painting uh, in color, uh, full color, like the, the original reference, just seeing it in black and white, there's something about it that really helps you to better understand it. Now, the next tool I wanna show you is uh, the posterize. Now, what I do is first turn this black and white and then I'll go to image adjustments, posterize, okay? And what this does is remove the number of values. So, and I have shown you, I believe this in a, in a past YouTube video, but let's go into more details. Now, look at the number of values. Now we're at four. So usually when you look at the, the image full quality, so you'll get like two, uh, 256 values maybe. I don't know if that's like accurate. This one's 255. The difference between 255 and 233 and 161 isn't important. It really isn't. There's barely any difference. Once you hit those single digits, that's when you'll feel the difference. So if I turn this into just two values, basically black and white, now I see Okay, the composition here is just the sky and the city. These are the main large shapes. Um, and you may have figured it out before, but maybe you haven't. So this is really important. You see, it's just divided into two sections. And you also notice, look at the clouds up top here. They're very significant in wrapping around the sky and having it shine even more. Okay, by adding that border up top, right around here, it frames the sky and makes them even stronger and punchier. Not to mention, look at the sun, the, the lightest part here in this, uh, in this reference is directly next to a darker value, the, the clouds up top. And this really provides a lot of um, this punchy contrast that makes it shine even brighter. And all of these things you may have not thought about when you looked at the original photo. And again, let me remind you, not in black and white, in color, you don't think about all of these things. So let's go once again and let's go um, image adjustment, um, posterize. Now look at that. So we go all the way down to two values. Now let's go a little up. Let's go to three values. So now you get to see, wow, this is really important. And this is again, look at it like research tool. It doesn't mean you'll paint based on that, but it is a great research tool to show you now. Okay, so we have the sky. Everything else is darker, but look at this huge highlight in the middle of the sky. That's an important factor. Now, as we go to four values, you, you'll notice that some of the buildings at the far back 
are actually darker than the background and that's the thing that's responsible for making them pop so you get to learn all sorts of crazy insights about the reference now as you hit the 10 12 you pretty much get the reference photo before you posterize it there isn't a significant amount of value the uh, 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 difference the magic is in those lower digits the one two three uh, sorry not one two three four maybe five six seven um a number of values okay basically these are the ones that will allow you to see the reference much much more clearly now let me show you another tool and that's something that is often discussed when you're teaching people to do plein air one of the things you say is always squint your eyes try to see things like the the larger picture try to see it more blurry in a way now let me show you what this means so we go to filter blur and then we'll choose maybe gaussian blur there are plenty of ways of blurring this but let's go with that now notice how this again it really brings forth the gist of the scene big strip of sky big strip of land now you may notice now that this uh, body of water here is a little awkward down at the corner and i originally cropped it out i just painted this uh the, the center frame uh, i completely ignored that section why because it doesn't do anything for me it's tangential to the edge of the scene so either bring it a little up closer to the center of the scene let me show you the original one again take this body of water bring it a little closer to the center so that it actually plays a role or just cut it out completely which is what i did uh, and by looking at this, like the overall value scheme, you get a better um, value and color scheme in this example. You get a better understanding of what this reference is all about. And you suddenly realize, oh, so there are some excessive elements I may not need. OK, so this just goes to show you how quickly you can gain all of these insights just using these basic tools. And you can find their parallels in whatever software or device you have if you're using an iPad or whatever. So let me show you real quick a couple of others. Uh, this is a photo I took here in a, a local park now it's very misleading to the eye when you look at this we are familiar with water we know what they look like so you won't necessarily be able to like you understand that this is a reflection maybe of trees on the water it turns it darker but you sometimes don't understand just how much look at the difference here uh, and look at the fish here and here and the darkness and now look at them like that and you'll notice just how this area is so much lighter than this area which is the reflection and look at the fish they're much lighter than the water itself in both sides by the way um it just helps to better understand what you have what you're working with by going black and white okay now let me show you another one so let's do the posterize and by the way if you're curious about posterization while in color because i haven't shown you this um it's just a little awkward sometimes because it's it's hard to find the right color so i always go black and white and then i do this uh, uh posterization now look at this this is the basic uh, composition we have here now this gives us something more to play around with maybe i want to move the reflections a bit make the overall composition more interesting i take pictures the way i'd like to paint them just subconsciously so i wouldn't change a thing about this one to be honest with you and it, it just makes sense to me because whenever i take a picture i really take my time to find the right crop or maybe i'll do it more zoomed out so that i can gain an overall more options to crop myself in the computer but overall i try to get the composition i would actually paint myself and this is a great example i wouldn't change anything about it why because look at all the shapes none are really equal size there's an interesting composition right out the gate look at this and now we're going into like uh, actual you know, composition stuff but it's just interesting to show you this entire lower half is filled with this um, mid to light value shape and it captures basically 50 percent of the entire thing now here we have maybe a third of this here we have maybe a sixth or seventh you see how the sizes change and nothing is in equal size even the fish have an interesting pattern to them one big then a bunch of small ones really really cool composition okay so let's go back to the original one let's go with the blur now just to get a better understanding of what it looks like and if you have photoshop use all of these to figure out you know your own compositions like when we went posterize we saw the difference between this section and this section not such a strong this uh, difference here when you look at it in full color even if it's blurry okay now let's try something else let's go with the posterize again let's play uh, sorry let's go black and white first uh, and let's play with the number of values let's see what we get okay 
this is again a great research tool you don't actually have to paint it the way you edited it you most of the time you won't but it's just really good now you see how you start seeing some of the nuances and all the way up to the full value scheme okay now if we go just to you get these two shapes already from here look at this lighter fish on a darker background and if you go just a little more you get the lighter fish here on the darker background so it's just a great research tool let's look at another one here this one i painted um a pretty detailed and slow and measured painting based off of which i'm very happy with now it's very easy to look at these shapes for example and think wow this our tendency is to make the lights lighter and the darks darker just automatically so you look at this body of the boat and you say wow that's white it's kind of gray i'm gonna make it white and i see this over and over again and then you look at this shadow you go okay this is black i'm gonna go black so you get this white and black and it's just too strong of a contrast whereas look at this black and white and you don't even have to it's pretty muted and subtle look at the difference between the two this is far as far from white as can be let me choose just a white color and let me show you with a brush so that would be white color look at the difference this is so much darker than white and it's a very common mistake even the sky here is is not really white you see it's much much darker so you have to take these things into consideration uh, you you have to look at the overall value scheme how many darkest darks do i have how many lightest light even the sky here look at the difference between white pure white and the sky the sky the sky at its lightest area is not even white it's not even close now let's go with uh, the posterization uh, and you'll see uh, you see these differences this is kind of the same as the shadow if you really want to simplify it um, you just gain all sorts of crazy understandings look at the, how important the pattern here of the shadows in the water is the reflection sorry this is really really important it's it's one of the main features of this scene uh, of this reference that i wanted to bring out and i actually put a lot of emphasis emphasis on it in the painting i did based on it uh, so just another quick one uh, blur won't always give you what you want like it's not that important to always blur but i tend to just to see the overall shapes it does help so look at this just one big mess of the land or maybe just the, the artificial land boats and then their shadows and reflections and that's what this scene is all about look at the masts how much space they take up again great research tool and the last one so we have this huge huge scene uh, of just a, a picture i took from a, a high floor building and i love these i love these scenes but people are so scared to tackle them for a good reason there is so much going on here for this the perfect answer is the posterization okay if you really want to just get a clear picture of what you're looking at just go like this okay now I, see, I have all of these in the shadow i have these buildings basically it's just their tops and their shadows within the shadows you can get the nuances you want once you add a few more values you see but this is what it's all about and and again if you have all of these complex shapes in the background simplify them turn them into one big shape of black or one big shape of gray you know you don't have to actually here you go you see you don't have to assign a different value to every small shape you do you can actually simplify this entire thing into just these two values you see uh, this one here and this one here and that's all you really need okay so great research tool great way to see the reference more clearly which will lead to a better painting but also to see the stylization and simplification if you're unsure how to simplify edit the photo a bit play around with it you will get a lot of answers from that and try you know just for an experiment try painting it exactly as it was edited by the photo uh, editing software it's kind of a crutch if you always paint based on that it's kind of a something you may not want to be dependent on in the future but it is a great method of just developing that way of seeing things more simplified so why not do a couple of these and paint them exactly as you see them in photoshop try it out and then after a while move away from that and use it as perhaps an additional resource okay uh, so this is everything i wanted to show you in photoshop now a few notes after i've shown you how to use these tools i want you to play around with them use whatever software you have available not everyone's going to have photoshop and it's obviously a paid software you can find a lot of free softwares that come with your computer with your phone with your iPad that have a lot of these features built into them so I encourage you to try these out figure out what the tools are that you have at hand and then within them learn how to use their different functionalities 
to get the sort of impression you want. Maybe you find out you're a big fan of the posterize feature. Maybe you just like turning things black and white. Maybe you find a really cool filter that enables you to develop a better vision and learn how to simplify your uh, reference photo and learn how to work with it. You can even do it outside as you're painting plein air, snap a photo, edit it on the spot and just realize what you want to stress in it, what you want to better show in it, how you're going to simplify it and so on. And I just want to reiterate, for me, these most useful functionalities are definitely the uh, desaturation and also the posterization sometimes. Sometimes it can also get a little confusing, but desaturation always, always, always helps seeing the reference in better light. And in fact, very often students ask me, ask me to uh, critique their work. One of the first things I do is show them a black and white uh, example uh, uh, version of the reference and show them here you see this is where you were inaccurate and they immediately go wow I couldn't see it when it was in color so just a quick quick tip for you that will immediately help you improve your um, stylization accuracy and also simplification because a lot of simplification is based on values so with that we're gonna wrap it up thank you so much for joining me in this one and once you're ready let's move on to the next lesson